This lens retails for 13,000 US dollars and I've owned it for about seven years now. Has it been worth the money? Well, that's what we're going to chat about in this video. You know how when people get their first job making grown-up money, after a few years of work, they finally decide that it's time to treat themselves to a nice first watch. A watch that they imagine they'll wear for a lifetime, maybe pass it down to their children or their grandchildren. Some people buy a Tag Heuer, maybe a Rolex. Well, for me, instead of getting a watch, I got myself a Leica Noctilux. Now I didn't pay $13,000 for it, I got it used at around 40% of what it goes for now, but it was the lens that I was going to own for the entirety of my lifetime. Like that family watch to be passed down to my kid in the future, if he ever got into photography. Well that's the story I told myself. You see, I was absolutely in love with available light photography. And so when I switched to digital Leica, I was completely in love with the Manla Sumilux. So I thought if f1.4 was amazing, how much more amazing would 0 0.95 be? If only one day I could own the Noctilux, the unicorn lens, the peak of unobtainium. The fantasy you tell yourself that if only one day I owned that, all my pictures would look so special. Now fast forward almost seven years. Did it live up to the dream? Was it all I built it up to be in my head? Is the Leica Noctilux worth the money? Well, it's pretty much impossible to answer that as a blanket statement because everyone's photographic vision, intention, and life context is just so different. So instead, I'll be sharing with you some takeaways from having owned this lens so that if you are thinking of buying one, or maybe you're like me back then, and you have some aspirations to someday own one, you'll have a bit more information on whether or not this lens is going to be a good fit for you. First off, the thing that I absolutely love about it is the look that it gives your pictures. It undoubtedly presents your scene in a unique way. With its super large aperture, it pulls the background away and separates your subject beautifully, while still maintaining a ton of clarity and three-dimensionality. Technicalities aside, it just gives a good-looking picture, especially for a certain type of portrait photograph look, where the entirety of the picture kind of revolves completely around the person in the frame. It really does that kind of picture very well. And the only other lens in this category of lenses that I've used so far that really blows it out of the water is the Kodak Aerial Ektar. But that's a large format lens and it can only be used on a tripod with 4x5 film so it can't really be compared directly. And so compared the other large aperture lenses in this category, the Noctilux is pretty much at the top of the heap. Now as much as I love the rendering of this lens, after that initial excitement that we all get of owning a new piece of gear wears off. Looking back at my time using it, I think I've only used the Noctilux at most 5% of the time. I'd say 75% of the time I'm using a 35mm lens and the other 20% I'm using either a 21mm lens or the 50mm Sumilux. And all that's it. I'm still someone who still to this day truly loves the Noctilux for the pictures that it makes. So why is that? If I love this lens so much, why do I use it so little? Well, there are a few things about the Noctilux that kind of hinders me from using it on a daily basis. And these are the things that you might want to consider if you are thinking of buying one for yourself. First off, it's its relative size and weight. Now don't get me wrong, at around 800 grams, it's not by any means super heavy or super large. When I started working in photography, like many of you, I spent many years with a full-size DSLR with a grip, 70 to 200 f 2.8s, and I was really at home with them, so I'm pretty comfortable with heavy gear. Even right now, I use the Pentax 6.7 with a Hasselblad 500cm as my main medium format cameras, and compared to that, the Noctilux is still much smaller and lighter. But that's it, it's still relatively big, and when I say relatively, I mean in direct comparison to another 50mm M-mount lens. Say compared to the Sumilux. The Noctilux takes up almost 2-3 to three times the space and is almost double the weight. So when choosing between which to bring up with me, that difference is tangible enough that I find myself reaching for the lighter option, especially in situations where you don't think you'll be shooting wide open at f0.95. When it's a bright day out and you'll likely be stopping down a bit, if you have access to a lens that is a direct substitute that is tangibly lighter and smaller. For every other situation that you don't need 0.95, picking up the smaller lens always tends to be the first option. So maybe if you're thinking of getting an Noctilux, you'd want to sell all your smaller lenses too. 
Secondly is its balance. Its balance on a camera tangibly affects the shutter speed that you're able to use with it. Even though it gives you over one more stop of light as compared to f1.4, I found that I've not been able to handhold this lens at as slow a shutter speed as compared to a more balanced lens. For example, with the Sumilux at f1.4, if I'm using good slow shutter speed technique, I can frequently shoot at 1 30th of a second and get sharp pictures. But with the Noctilux, I need at least one 60th of a second, so the extra stop of light that f0.95 gives doesn't always translate to more usability in low light situations. Thirdly and most importantly, it's its focusing accuracy on a rangefinder. Now practically speaking, it's really tricky to get precise focus at 0.95, unless you're using something like the Leica SL where you can punch into 100% digitally. On a rangefinder, I found that I needed to get it calibrated almost every 9 months to a year, because the mechanism inevitably drifted. Now calibrating every 9 months is quite often, but I do shoot a lot and I don't baby my gear, so maybe if you shoot less, your mileage might vary, but to this day, nailing focus with the Noctilux still creates an unspoken sense of uncertainty at the back of my mind, and it's tangible enough that if I'm shooting something critical, maybe a very special moment to me, or I'm on a paid shoot where I need to nail my pictures, I almost never reach for the Noctilux in a high stakes environment. So despite being in love with the Noctilux, and I still very much am. All those things lead to me only using it for around 5% of the time. So that's it. Does it mean that it wasn't worth the money? Well, from a financial investment perspective, it definitely was. For the price I paid back then, I could sell it today for more than what I paid for it. So besides accounting for inflation, I pretty much got to use it for free. So from that perspective, it could be seen as worth the money. But how about in terms of its value as an object? Like, does it feel like you're getting what you're paying for in terms of its quality in and of itself? To that, I would say yes, I do think so. It's well made, and the only thing that I'm not a fan of with its design is its non-locking hood, but for what it is, it's a remarkable piece of optics, handmade by a reliable company with great but expensive customer service. And as much as there are clones out there, this is the original. So hats off to Leica for pushing the envelope of what's possible with a modern lens. And just like everything else, like a computer or a nice microphone, diminishing returns set in the higher you go. So as far as a lens goes, I do think you are getting what you're paying for. But wait, is it worth the money in terms of bringing value to your journey? In terms of it being the best use of your money for your photography right now? Now that's a different question and it really depends on where you are. If you're thinking of getting it used, the Noctilux goes for around $7,000 on KEH. Unless you're rolling in cash where $7,000 won't make a dent in what you could spend on your photography gear, I think that for most people, $7,000 spread across multiple things, like seven different $1,000 things, will go much, much further in impacting your photography journey in a more valuable way. Say getting a completely new focal length. Like maybe you've never shot telephotos before or maybe you've never shot ultra wides. On my personal journey, it was money spent on gear that made a first step into a new direction that always felt like the best money spent. My first full frame camera, my first film camera, my first rangefinder, as compared to an upgrade or getting more of the same thing. It's almost like the first thing gets you 80 to 85% of the way there. And after that, any upgrade, no matter how expensive only adds 5 to 10% to your journey. Not to mention that right now, there are many options out there that could get you very close to the Noctilux, the new Voigtlander F1, or the 0.95 clones. You could explore those options as well and still have a bunch of money left over for other things. So if there are any new areas of photography that you're thinking of exploring, I think that putting your money into those things might yield more fruit as compared to upgrading from say F1.4 to F0.95. But that doesn't mean that the Noctilux might not be the lens for you. If you already love 50mm, and by that I mean you're certain that 50mm is the main perspective that you view and explore the world with, and you already have been using a 50 as your main lens for at least 3-5 to five years, and especially if a large part of your pictures revolve around that large aperture shallow background blur look, then the Noctilux might very well be a great fit for you, and it might be the lens that you use the most, that aids you in best expressing what you are trying to say with your photography. And if that's you and you still have a strong desire to own it one day, but you don't quite yet have the budget to buy it, please don't feel like you're missing out in the time being. Keep making pictures with the lenses that you do have 
have because a good picture is a good picture whether or not it was made at f0.95, f1.4 or f2. And as much as the Noctilux is special, after the shine of first owning it wears off say in a month or two, it just becomes another tool in your toolbox with a slightly wider aperture. That's all for today's video. Jeremy here. If you liked it, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.